me guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Emily and today we are talking all about propagating plants. So a while back, I actually met up with some other plant entrepreneurs here in San Diego and I met one new friend named Conrad who also owns a small online shop called Modern Botanical and he was so sweet enough to offer me some of their propagation stations and even help me set them up in my space. So I'm really excited for that. He's gonna be here any minute now. And what's also great is that he is a propagating pro. So he's going to be sharing some of his tips. And we're also gonna go around and choose some plants that I have here in order to propagate. Before he gets here, I kinda wanted to give you guys the little plan of what's gonna go down. So let's go and I'll show you. Okay, so first off, I wanted to obviously get some in the office. I just love having a bunch in the workspace. So where I'm thinking is having one and one. So right above the desk. And you guys will see once he gets here and you'll know what I'm talking about. I also am thinking about putting one right here or possibly two, we shall see. And then lastly, I'm thinking about having one up here. And the breakfast nook is looking a little crazy right now because I am filming a time lapse of this new leaf that is about to unfurl. Just been recording it with my old iPhone. So those are the spaces that I'm thinking of, but I'm excited to show them to you guys. We're gonna discuss how to properly propagate, which plants are the best for propagating, how to get the most out of propagating, and so much more. I'm back and Conrad is here, the owner of Modern Botanical, and he's gonna share with you guys a little bit more about his brand. Um, hey there, I'm Conrad, one of the co-founders of Modern Botanical, and uh, we make these um, propagation frames. We make, hand make them here in San Diego, and I think we launched back just uh, November 2020 in the chaos of all the COVID stuff. Yeah, I've just been having a lot of fun. Propagation and growing plants in water is just something that's so accessible but because we all have like cups and glasses and such and you really, if you know how to take the right cutting off of a plant, mm -hmm. you're able to grow plants. And um, so we really love it for that because it's just a really fun space to learn and grow and like propagate and uh, multiply your plants through. But also it's a really beautiful opportunity to be able to like simply grow plants throughout your house. And I think that's where we kind of look at ourselves within the business space is um, creating beautiful products that are responsibly sourced and made that give you a way to put cool plants throughout your home. One of the many things that we kind of think about with these is that these like larger glasses here actually allow you to grow plants in water for quite a while. I um, have a pretty big plant wall at my house. Like the same plants have been in there for almost a year now. Oh wow. Um, some of them more than a year. Nice. Um, and so one of the things that we like try to do as a business is like help educate and share um, resources and tips and um, nice. products that help you actually keep plants growing on your wall for quite a while. I have a lot of viewers who love plants. Propagating is a great way of like basically not messing up. So <laughs> they already know where we're gonna set up. Do you mind showing them those other ones? We have those frames and then he's gonna show us the propagation hangers. Those are really neat as well. So I have to figure out which ones I want for which space. So it's gonna get pretty fun. These are our propagation wall hangers. We make these out of maple. We also have them in a walnut version as well. Um, if you look back behind here, um, there's actually a walnut inlay sitting in there too. So uh, we take a lot of consideration to those details. I tend to be able to put these up within about a minute or so. So it can be really quick once you get the hang of it. Yeah, we have the triple, a double, we have some of the wall hangers and just trying to play with aesthetics. I think one big thing for all of our products is to just make things like very simple. So this is a guide. And so with this double right here, um, it kind of shows you where to drop the nails. Um, so there's a little dot for where you put the nails in the wall. Also, the thing I love about this is because it's the same size as the frame itself, I'll just put tape up here and it allows me to kind of like play with spacing and just start moving it around. So smart. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it so much easier. Yeah. yeah. It's a framework here. I was thinking like having these like a little bit more up. We out. We out. Okay, I think that's kind of chill. Outside again. Sweet. I'll put them halfway in um, and then I'll tear the uh, paper off and then I'll hammer them the rest of the way. Got it. Outside again. Alright, you guys, so 
now we are in the office and I think it's gonna look so good. And I'm a pro now, so this should not take too long. It was actually really, really easy. and just sticking with the wall hanger right here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm <laughs> All right, now time to figure out what is actually gonna go in these. All right, you guys, now that everything is set up, it's time to go around and figure out what plants we're gonna be propagating and Conrad's gonna be sharing some tips on which plants are best to propagate and all that stuff. There's like a ton of plants here that we can cut and propagate and all that. Almost every plant in here. Um, yeah, I didn't even know that. Like I, I propagate a lot of plants, but he was telling me that I could propagate some that I didn't even know I could. So we're gonna go around. I kind of already know what we're gonna be doing. So for sure, I'm going to be propagating this rubber tree that I didn't even, I've never propagated it. So I usually propagate like trailing plants and all that stuff, but kind of gonna give us a few pointers over here. We call them rubber plants or a, a ficus of some sort. When you're kind of thinking about a cutting here, the glass vases are about seven and a half inches tall. Um, so you want a little bit of a stem underneath it. And what we're looking for is pressure-ish growth. This one actually might be kind of cool. Cool. And so when you're cutting a rubber tree, it's pretty interesting because they will start to grow these little white bumps on the side of them mm -hmm. um, before you see any roots shoot out. And the little white bumps are called cavium, and it's kind of like the plant attempting to shoot roots. We could have taken pretty big stems here, but the more leaf mass that exists above it, it can require too much water to be able to support those leaves, and so it can actually negatively impact the roots from um, showing up. Conversely, if you don't have enough leaves up top, then it won't have enough energy from light to be able to shoot the roots out, and so you're trying to find like a happy medium of like a few, a small handful of like nice leaves. And it's also a slower plant to propagate. Um, oh, okay. So usually I kind of expect to give that one at least a month, a month and a half for the roots to start to develop. Good to know. So next one, we should go ahead and propagate the snake plant. And believe it or not, I've never propagated a snake plant. And so we're just like trying to find like a nice size and shape piece that's going to look good inside the frame that we have. So this is actually going to end up going in the bathroom. So we're kind of yes. looking for a tall piece that's going to fit in that space, but not too tall. So I think something like this might actually look good. Yeah. Think so. Awesome. And one thing I'm gonna do, so you see at the end, it kind of V's up. I'm gonna actually do that a little bit more. So I'm actually gonna accentuate that V a tiny bit. More. Oh, okay. And, and what's that for? So this is going to sit on the bottom and the roots are actually gonna develop out of the bottom of the plant. So rather than having the roots just like sitting on the glass at the bottom, mm -hmm. um, this will just kind of lift them up a little bit so the roots have a little bit more space. Oh, okay, to got it. And these things are actually pretty crazy. You can like take one snake plant and if you wanted to, you could just cut it in like little one inch sections. Oh, and it will I think I have seen something like that. Each of the little sections will sh eventually shoot off roots. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, so these are gonna want like your brighter, brighter light um, they can take a little bit longer during like winter mm -hmm. months um, Next. So we have two so I brought over a couple plants over here as well I have two they're both of a calathea variety um, one I actually don't know the name but I do know the name of this one it's a uh, makoyana they have these like really cool leaves and I've had a ton of success growing these ones in water so it looks like these roots here came from the dirt and these ones we can actually probably take off um, but you do see some new growth right and we also have another I'm not sure of the name pretty... either though there's so <laughs> many calatheas yeah um, but they're a wonderful plant they grow well in water I actually have had better luck growing them in water than in soil this could be helpful for people <laughs> that are having trouble with calatheas because I know a lot of people do so we're gonna take a piece of this guy over here okay. the, the plants that we've cut so far he hasn't mattered a ton where you chose to cut it and so the monsteras as well as like the of those varieties the leaves come out of only um, sections on the stem called nodes and so the nodes have genetic information to either like shoot off a leaf or they can shoot off roots and so we want to get at least one node submerged in water um, and that's where the roots are going to develop and shoot out so that the monstera can happily grow in water Sweet. So we got this funky leaf here, yeah. <laughs> um, but we have these two pretty leaves right here. So I'm actually just gonna snap this off. 
Um, and that's not the end of the world. Monsteros are so hardy. So right here, and then right here, where that other leaf just came off, um, those are nodes. And so once they're submerged in water, we're gonna start to see some roots develop out of there. The last thing we're missing are some trailing plants. So this guy over here, this satin pothos, is just getting super leggy. It's so, yeah, it just, it's not fitting in my space right here anymore. So I thought, why not propagate a bunch of this? So this is another plant where we want to take a node and use the node to um, submerge in water. Really, if you look at the base of each of these leaves, is like this little spacer in between the lengths of the vine. And so each of those little spacers in between there is a node. So right now we have a leaf on there, and when we take a cutting, which I'll do right here, I'm gonna take this cutting here and then I'm actually going to go ahead and just like cut one more time a little bit closer to the nearest node. Basically, the plant doesn't end up needing the length of the plant beyond that node, so it's easier to just cut it off. In preparing it for water, we don't need the leaves any longer, so I think these three leaves here are probably not needed. That I really want to propagate my Monstera aransanae, or how do you call it? Aransanae. And sunny eye, okay. So this is gonna be the exact same process as what we did over there. Um, we identified a couple. This um, one, right? This one. Yep, that one and I think these two. Yes. Sweet. So I'm just gonna take the cutting right behind that node. Take off probably these two leaves. I must be Propagated. So, Conrad, what do we do next? Right now, I mean, I would say most of the work's done, and I think like getting the plants in the water, uh, finding the right space for it all. Um, so now we're just kind of like hanging out, waiting uh, for right. the plants to uh, <laughs> begin to show roots. When you put plants in water, um, there's kind of a depending on the plant, depending on the temperature and your space, how much light they're getting, kind of influence the time it takes for them to actually propagate. Which okay. is, we kind of look at that as like when they actually start to show roots. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally, for like what we put in water today. The Monstera deliciosa and Edensonii are probably going to show roots first, would be my guess. Okay, cool. Um, I'd say that the snake plant and the rubber um, tree are probably going to be the slowest, and everything else will be kind of in between there. But I guess okay. between like one week um, and about six weeks, like all the plants should begin to show roots. Nice, yeah. awesome. I know that there's other things they can do to help promote the growth, right? Yeah, I mean, um, so one thing I think is pretty important over the long term is um, using a bit of nutrients uh, within the water. Um, and it kind of depends. So like if your goal is to just propagate the plant, mm -hmm. um, then you don't really need nutrients because yeah. the plant actually has like enough like energy sources already stored within its leaves and everything to be able to shoot roots um, and ultimately transfer into or soil or whatever your growing medium is. The reason we made these is because it's really cool to just like let plants grow in water and watch them kind of grow leaves and shoot roots out over the course of a year. So if that's your plan, then we generally recommend using nutrients. We have um, a nutrient here, but yeah, it's made for hydroponics. So the uh, nutrient solution is a little bit different. It has a kelp ext extract in it, which is really good to help promote root growth. So just hopefully speed up that process a little bit. A couple things that are helpful to know about the whole process. You do want to replace the water periodic I personally do it about every three weeks. Okay. Um, and I'm on the lazier end. Of okay, the spectrum. okay, okay. So about three yeah. weeks is is good. Or I usually wait until I see the water get like a little like foggy or something. The reason you're actually changing the water mm -hmm. um, is to replenish oxygen in the water. So plants utilize oxygen um, in the soil or in water mm -hmm. to help grow. Um, I don't know where it is within like the photosynthesis process yeah. or something, but like <laughs> they need they need it to grow. So um, you're re really replacing the water to replenish the oxygen level so that the roots don't like suffocate um, and a lot of times when you it's like sometimes if you get a plant that gets root rot things like that it's because they're not getting enough access to oxygen and therefore mm. just like die um lighting is so important for healthy plants and you yeah. have like really fabulous lighting in your home which is mm -hmm. why like plants love you here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so that helps a lot but when you when you kind of bring the water element into it so three factors that will like influence algae growth which is a thing that oh, can happen if you okay. get too much light so it's like oh. it's temperature it's light intensity and and it's nutrients. So some combination of those three, like if all those three things are like really high, it's like really intense light, it's a little bit warmer and you have a lot of nutrients in the water, algae mm -hmm. will grow faster. This is like one of the parts of like plant parenting is like getting to know your plants, getting to know your space. And so I think that if you do have your plants growing in a place with like extra bright light, mm -hmm. um, you may need to swap the water sooner. The dining area might need water more often. Yeah. The office probably Definitely. is gonna need, like you can probably need the ones in the office for like 
four or five weeks. Like, okay. okay. I mean, you, you're probably not going to see any issue there. <laughs> Got so it. So something you pay attention right. to. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Awesome. I think we covered a <laughs> lot in this video. And yeah, that's basically it. I just want to say thank you to Conrad for coming over and setting up all these awesome propagation hangers. Don't forget, you guys, to check out Conrad over at Modern Botanical. All this information is going to be right here and down below in the description. Check him out on Instagram. He's always sharing a bunch of tips over there. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Share it with your plant friends. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, right? Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys. See you next time.